Good morning, traders. This is Brad Matheny again. Today is Thursday, the 12th of September. Boy, where is this month going? Just seems like a week ago I was talking to you guys about the beginning of the month. Here it is, the middle of the month. And, uh, of course, been a little hectic out here in California with the fires, uh, the airport fire and the line fire. Now there's another one. I think it's called the bridge fire out in uh, uh, Angeles Oaks area, San Gabriel Mountains. Um, generally, these things aren't very close to me. Remember, we're not talking anything super close. The airport fire was the closest one. And yeah, it was a little, it was a little weird watching it come down the mountain and, uh, uh, and really blow up about two days ago. But it looks like the firefighters are doing a great job and, uh, Helicopters everywhere, you know, tanker droppers everywhere. Uh, it's really a sight to see. And uh, remember, the, they let the fires pretty much run in the empty canyons. You know, there's not much they can do to throw resources at it when it's burning in an open forest area, unless the weather's right. You know, high moisture and, and cooler temperatures, which we hadn't had up until maybe yesterday. Uh, but um, when it gets close to houses, boy, they are, uh, they are really skilled in what they do. I mean, watching these helicopters and these firefighters, and I'm sure these, you know, these line crews, they're really powerful at stopping these fires. Uh, and granted that some of them get out of control, but you know, long and short of it is they, they did a great job. That's all I can say. I don't think we've had very many houses lost with this, uh, airport fire that came so close. Okay, well, let's get right into it. So today, after yesterday's big move, I'll spread this out. You can see my uh, my SPY chart here. This is daily. Big rotation came down and filled the gap down in this lower window, then a huge rally. I mean, a massive rally. This is a move from uh, 540 all the way up to 554. That's a 14 point move to the upside yesterday. Uh, really massive from low to high. Uh, and again, today we have, let me get to it. Let me get to it. Come over here. Come over here. And here. Today we have a breakaway pattern in trending mode. Yesterday was an inside breakaway. Let's move this out of the way. Yep. Open right inside and was a breakaway. Could have gone either way actually yesterday, but it was lovely to see this move upward. Um, and today we have a breakaway in trending mode. So a breakaway in trending mode, remember, is probably going to be, i try to draw it for you, um, more of a, could get a gap. We really could get a gap up into the upside, but generally could open anywhere in this area and still be considered a breakaway. So an inside breakaway means that we open within yesterday's range typically which we did um and now today's move we could get a gap or maybe not a gap maybe down we've got jobs at 8 30 in the morning eastern time so about an hour before the market could get a bit of rotation and a moderate push upward now today could we move into the 560 area yeah we could i mean let's be realistic we had a, a five point move, 5.6 point move yesterday in the uh, in the NASDAQ. We're up today already a dollar, almost a dollar, a little over actually. And uh, could we see this move two or three dollars up in the 558, 560 area? You bet you we could. Uh, could we see it move higher? Yeah, maybe. Um, remember, ultimately, guys, we're watching this level. We're watching this level here as a as a pullback mode for what we're trying to see. We need to see if it's going to get above this level here and rally. Okay, I will draw a line across this level because it is important. We need to see if it's going to get above that level and rally or if it's going to roll off of this phase two of an excess phase peak pattern into the 1920th now if we get up into the 558 560 area we're going to be very close to this peak um, we could move a little higher but it would be important to see it start to roll next week and again notice over here where we're at we got a gap potential 
on Monday, we get a topping pattern on Tuesday, we get a gap potential on Wednesday, we get a top resistance on Thursday in counter trend mode, which means could be basing bottoming. I see this as being rotation next week. So if you look at where we're at here, and so we've got this last bar here, and then we've got the rally bar, which I will carry forward. I see next week being rotation into the 19th, 20th, moving back downward, I believe. So give you an example here of where we're at. I think that uh, we're looking at the rally day tomorrow, which I'm going to carry out over here. Back up maybe into the 561.50, 561.70 area. Today, believe it or not, folks, I think we're going to stay rather muted. I think we're going to have a breakaway pattern, but I think we're going to stay rather muted on the jobs data. What I think is really going to happen is we're going to see the uh, jobs data come out. It's going to be interpreted as uh, as a uh, move for the Fed, meaning what will the Fed do if jobs come out hot again after these revisions the last couple of weeks, then the, it's going to be likely that the Fed uh, is going to potentially try to make a move to reduce rates. Personally, and this is what I think is happening. On that. So understand, people try to interpret and see the, the most optimistic side of things. Me, personally, I don't think the Fed's going to do a thing until end of first quarter 2025, maybe second quarter 2025. I think the Fed is very complacent where they're at right now, not going to change a thing. Unless something really breaks, I, and I mean really breaks, I don't think they're going to do a thing. I think they're just happy where they're at. Nothing is really broken. They are um, pulling capital out of the market. That is their job. They will look to stabilize at the end of 2025, maybe 2026, by possibly making adjustments then. But understand, that's that's a full 12 months, maybe 15 months away before the Fed's even going to consider making some move. So I think the jobs data is going to come out. Traders are going to try to anticipate that the Fed's going to make a move before the end of the year. I don't personally see it happening. Uh, and traders can do whatever they want to do. But tomorrow we have another rally day. Um, and we have a rally day in good solid trending mode right here in carryover mode leading to that topping pattern. So what I'm looking at is a moderate breakaway day here just i i mean i don't know how to put it any other way a moderate breakaway day here nothing huge maybe up three quarters or a half percent uh, compared to yesterday we're already close to that right now um i would suggest that maybe 557 and a half uh 558 maybe is our high today and then we might roll off of that but still close positive and then tomorrow we get our rally day into this high, probably 560, 560 and a half, maybe 561. Then we move down into this rollover pattern. And this rollover pattern is going to be the consolidation and the rotation here leading to this top. And so again, we get above these highs, then we're back into bullish trending. We get below this low, we're back into bearish trending. I'll make this red. So we get back up above here, we're bullish. So I'm going to do this so you guys can understand. We get above this level, we're bullish. And we get a below this level. And we are bearish. Okay, there you go. So there's our bullish level. We have to get above that level to be back in bullish trending and or we have to get below this level to get into bearish trending. Right now, we are in a consolidated excess phase peak pattern. I drew it for you yesterday. We're actually in a dual excess phase peak pattern. This is the flagging setup here. You can see these levels here and here. These are the flagging setup of this excess phase peak. We have rolled out of that excess phase peak flagging, and generally, we would be attempting to come back down here to this level which I will, instead of my line drawing, crazy line drawing, I will draw it for real with a line. So this becomes our 
ultimate um, breakdown level for uh, for this original excess phase peak pattern. And the original excess phase peak pattern comes from way back here, comes up to this peak, which is A, rolls down to this deep low, which is B, rolls into flagging here, which is the second phase formation. We stayed away from that ultimate high here, rolled out of flagging, which is a breakdown. Now, typically what we should be doing in this mode, just so you know what this mode should be capable of doing is rolling downward from this level down to this level, moving into some new support level, bouncing and then either rallying out or breaking down and so this we highlighted i highlighted this area yesterday as a potential support area this was one of my drawings yesterday so ideally this is what the excess phase peak pattern does so once we get into flagging we either break this high and continue upward or we break down and attempt to retest these lows Okay, then it obviously we try to break them as well. That's what an excess phase peak pattern is. It's a five phase blowout of a top. The peak, the pullback, the flag, the breakdown below support into uh, secondary support, the flagging sideways move, bouncing, which can last years or months or weeks at times then a final breakdown into the ultimate low or a recovery back into bullish trending. Each one of these can move either A, bullish or B, bearish. So now we have this major uh, excess phase peak pattern setting up into an intermediate excess phase peak pattern here. And this is our intermediate pattern. i mark this as blue, mark this as blue. So we have an excess phase peak leading to an excess phase peak pattern, a secondary, in, uh, call it internalized, or uh, uh, let's just call it a secondary pattern within this range. So now we're in this phasing flagging formation right now, looking for the markets to either break out upward and continue higher or break down, meaning what would happen at this point on a breakdown is we would get a breakdown we would come to this area, maybe struggle, maybe break right through it, coming down, setting up some new resistance area flag, and then either breaking down or breaking up, like I explained, off of some secondary resi or support resistance area like this, giving us a real clear secondary pattern. So what we're looking at again here is the bigger, broader picture in context with the secondary smaller excess phase peak pattern. And again, that's that's where we're at. That's what's playing out right now. That so we either, again, either get above this level and rally or get below this level here, which is our immediate low excess phase peak support, which is uh, 540.28 roughly, get below that level and break down to secondary support. Secondary support, I think, is going to be where this yellow range is. And I, I can extend this here a bit. Come over here and just kind of draw this. Again, that would be what I think would be secondary support in that area. Okay, so we covered this. QQQ is pretty much the same setup. Let's go take a look at the QQQ. And remember, we have the same setup as you can see. I've drawn it here. I cleared all of my other drawings for you on here so you can see it. Here's our flagging formation coming upward of the secondary excess phase peak. Here's our major peak coming down, flagging for the major excess phase peak. You can see we have the lower channel here. We have the lower channel here. We would eventually, if we broke this level, come down, try to find secondary support, which again, maybe, you know, in this area here. So what would happen in that time frame is that we would be looking at 
we would be looking at a breakdown if we saw this, a breakdown in price, maybe running into some resistance support here, then trying to find secondary support, then rolling around and maybe breaking down or breaking upward eventually. So ultimately, that's kind of the structure uh, that we have in regards to this secondary excess phase peak. Now, again, this broader excess phase peak is the bigger pattern. So again, if we get below this level that I tried to highlight here, I did a horrible job of highlighting that in, in my drawing. We get below that level or above this level. And we have secondarily this level. And we have, whoops. Lastly, now this level. So... These are all the primary constructs of the excess phase peak pattern. This becomes a support level. This becomes a support level. And these are moderate resistance up here. So again, you can see where we're at. We've got to kind of play out through this cycle. What I believe will be the most likely outcome here is the markets are going to rally up into flagging in this area around the 20th or so, and then break down and try to either A, reach these levels, or B, find some intermediate support and rally back out of it. So I'm looking for support to form right before the election is what I believe is gonna happen right around this area. And again, I don't know where it'll be, so I will highlight this like this i don't know where it'll be yet very likely going to be above this 448 to 462 area on the nq or the qqq at least at this point i'm trying to find support right before the election and i believe the election event which will be right here november 5th so this has got to move out a little bit. There's our area around October 20th, 18th through 20th. Really, it could be even wider, somewhere between the 15th and the 20th. But I think this election event here is going to be the make or break event for uh, the markets. Depending on what happens, depending on how it plays out, I think we're going to be looking at a, a very possible make or break event here. Um, for the markets and there's my cat saying good morning okay let's go over to gold starting to move a bit higher shush juju oops uh why can't i get gold oh yeah so gold is starting to move quite a bit higher we're getting a a nice little rolling flagging formation here um, you can see that we're starting to build a little momentum. Remember, I highlighted this area yesterday, this this ellipse here. If, if gold gets up in this area, don't be shy about pulling the profits, okay? I mean, yeah, it could get up in this 20, uh, 2570, 2580 area, but really, guys, this is, I'll make it even bigger for you. This is a good take profit zone right up here. You don't have to be shy about trying to grab profits because my analysis is, is that we're going to reach a top um, by Wednesday or Thursday of next week. And then we could be looking at a, a moderate flash uh, type crash in gold. So here's the 19th. These are daily bars we have today taking place right now. Then we have Friday. Then we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So by Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week, maybe. If we get upward trending, then we're moving into my flash crash type environment. So, you know, pay attention and take profits. If you've got profits right now, this is a great time to, to basically just take them. The market's not going to give you too much opportunity. And like I said, 25.93 right now would be a very good number. If we get up to 25.93, <clears throat> I'm going to be screaming at you guys to to book your profits. Personally, I think 2565 is about as high, 2565, 2570. I think that's about as high as we're gonna get in this phase. 
I really do. Okay, let's look at silver. Sorry, a little phlegm this morning. Like I said, we've been breathing in smoky air for the past three and a half days. Okay, silver's moving higher as well. 29.60, 29.75 probably is a good area to look for this flagging formation to roll out. You can see that we are, you know, obviously moving into, I wouldn't call them excess phase peak patterns, but we are moving into, you know, this is actually a beautiful excess phase peak, breaking down, rolling into a secondary excess phase peak. I talked about this yesterday. I don't know if you can see this, but oh my gosh, what a great example. This is this is just beautiful. Excess phase peak into excess phase peak. Now, the one thing about excess phase peak patterns <clears throat> is you need to understand they happen everywhere. They happen all the time, everywhere. I mean, I can go all the way back over here and I can find them everywhere. Here's a big, beautiful excess phase peak pattern right here rallying up you can see it here peaking coming down flagging and breakdown uh you can see the same thing everywhere rallying up coming down flagging and a breakdown uh and they happen in upturns as well rallying up coming down flagging and flag took off into the uptrend so they're everywhere they really are and they are the building blocks of market price activity a lot of people don't see it. They call it flagging. They call it trending. But this broader pattern, this excess phase peak pattern, which is very clearly identified right here, this is a beautiful example of the first phase, three phases. The last phase would be a breakdown or a break away from this pattern. So knowing where we're at, we've come down and set this low. We're coming back up, we'd have to break above this high. Now we have this secondary high here, which gives us a more moderate area. And we've got this flagging low right here coming across this area. This is our now our breakaway. We need to get around that area. Uh, make it a little darker. We need to get around this high or this low in order to continue to trend. If we get above this high, we're bullish. We get below this low, we're bearish. And right now we're in flagging. We should be expecting flagging to stall right around this 2950, 2970 area uh, and roll back to, or attempt to roll back downward. That would be the next phase, just like we saw right here. Okay, uh, let's go to Bitcoin. 58,000, where's my friend with the... Uh, with the questions about Bitcoin, you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, back down here, he asked me last weekend if I thought uh, crypto was done. Do I still think it's going higher? Yeah, I still believe we're rolling out of this. I see the, the hedge assets being a very strong component over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. And I consider Bitcoin a hedge asset. I don't consider it an alternate currency because as I've proven many times, what happens if the bank shut down and your debit cards don't work uh, and you can't actually get on the internet with your phone. What happens if, you know, the technology quits? Is it a currency if you can't gain access to it and it's stuck out in the ether and you can't do anything with it? You can't buy it, you can't sell it, you can't do anything. It's just disappeared because the internet's off and no longer is it a viable Currency? No, it does. It, at that point, it has no value because no one's going to take Bitcoin in an environment of, you know, the world is ending. If it goes back down to the world is ending, then you're going to be looking at food, water, shelter, ammunition and gold and silver and platinum. That's what's going to be of value then. OK, so again, I think that as a as a currency, the lack of tangibility of bitcoin is a real issue you can't trade it unless you have power and the internet and you know that requires global infrastructure so without it bitcoin is a whole bunch of nothing is really is what it is so where are we at right now i think we're going higher because i don't think world war 19 or 3 is going to disrupt our world i don't think we're going to see a breakdown in infrastructure I think we're going higher. I really think we're going to climb our way out of this. But remember, 
we're still going to have that election time volatility. So be aware that, you know, as we come into the election back over here, November 5th, be aware that we're going to have some real volatility. And as, as you can see, I've drawn multiple times. I think we climb out of this up into 61 grand. I think we pause with a little flash crash right around the 27th, 28th, maybe of September. Then we rally into a move here. And I think this is going to be what metals are going to do as well. I think metals will rally into the election. So we'll see how it plays out over the next 35, 40 days before the election. Um, and we'll, we'll see if this actually plays out, like I said. But where, where we're looking right now, if we get a moderate rally in Bitcoin, we could easily be up in the 60, 61, 62,000 here by Friday. And we have this very solid range setting up already. So look really for this apexing level right here. 61,900 to call it 60,500. That'd be a very good target area right here. I'm going to run out of time if I don't hurry. Right in that area. Very good target area for the move higher right now. Okay, a little longer than normal. Thank you for all the comments. Really great. Uh, and like I said, let's go get some. Talk to you later.